Hello guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to integrate C++ and KML. So basically we have two things, right? We have a backend and a frontend, right? The frontend is KML and the backend is CPP. And we'll be connecting both of these, right? In this video, there are many ways of connecting, but the most uh, famous ways are setting context property and setting register type register type and the third is using kml element and loading modules right this is the most famous way and the suggestion way qt6 but in this video i'll be showing you how to work with context property right so why why connect cpp and kml file you may ask so basically let's say you have settings right uh, for example let's say i have an application here right and there i have settings now I want to change the color, the theme preference and the other, other preferences, right? So if I set that, I want it to remain even after the application is quit and started again, right? I want my preferences to stay there. So that is why uh, what we can do is we can uh, store all of this data in a database, in a DB and after or, or in the registry, right? There are many ways to do that in the registry or in any, any file, right? In any file, in any text file. And again, after the application is restarted, we want the settings to be uh, prevalent right that's why we want the cpp to store and uh, implement the logic of storing the settings and HTML to implement to show the ui so in this video i'll be showing you how to do that uh, so basically we'll be having a backend file a backend cpp file and which will be an object right of a class and we'll be using methods of that class right so let's see how to implement that let's go back to cute creator and in this video i'll be showing you how to use set context property uh, so first of all uh, right click here and add new c plus class go choose i'll say backend helper you can call it anything you want but backend helper uh, seems very sensible uh, right now choose the base class as q object because we want to use qt methods and we want cable to like access this backend helper class make sure these two are checked include key object add key object right this is a macro now click on next finish and uh, save this and wait for it to load if it doesn't load go to build and run cvic and as you can see a uh, header file is added called backend helper dot h and a uh, source file is added called backend helper dot cvp Right, this is a basic class, and uh, here we'll be writing the method uh, definition and implementing it in the CPP file. So, let's add our method under public so anyone can access it and add a macro called Q invocable. Invocable, uh, this is important uh, because uh, uh, otherwise, Q1 won't be able to access your methods. Right, so this in a way exposes your method to Q1. Now, let's make a function called void print text okay my bad yeah now uh, right click here refactor add definition in cpp and here we'll be implementing the logic so uh, first of all add a include file called qdebug qdebug so that we can print something and here we'll say Q info backend called. So anytime the QML calls this method, like uh, like QML uh, calls this method print text, will be uh, console logging this uh, line backend called in the application output will be displaying this line, right? So very simple application. Uh, later we'll be working with something more complex, but for now let's go with it. In the main.cv file, first of all, include the class we have just created backend helper right now also include one another class called qql context qql context <coughs> excuse me now uh, what we can do is after the engine is set create an object of backend helper i'll call it obj you can call it anything you want this is our singleton object all the qml files will be able to access the methods of backend helper with the help of this object i hope you know what an object is right 
very simple thing in C++. Uh, the object is a way, or a, you can think of it as a variable, which will help access all the methods and the properties, right? Which are public, of course. So anyway, uh, what we can do is engine dot root context. Now this returns a pointer of a QQML context. So because it's a pointer, use the arrow function set context property now this accepts two things the first is the name which you'll be using to call it from qml the second is the actual object reference so say ampersand obj since this is an object reference and we'll call it c backend helper you can call it anything you want but i've added a c because c stands for cpp right so in a way i know that this is exposed from cpp from backend so in main.kml, I can do this. I can call a button and import cute quick controls. <coughs> Excuse me. And in the button, I'll say address dot center in parent. So it's in the center. <coughs> My bad. Address dot center in parent. And I'll say text is click me and on click. I'll call C backend helper dot print text. Now, since that is a method, I am adding a parenthesis. Print text is a method we have just created. And we have also added a macro queue invocable. So this KML file can actually access that method. And it's also public, right? It's also public. So anyone can access it. So now let's see what happens when we click on that button. This is the output window. Let's see. Let's clear the output window and let's click on the button. And as you can see, backend call is being printed right here in the output window. Let's increase the font size. Yeah. And let's do it one more time. Yeah. As you can see, backend call is being called right. <laughs> Funny, backend call being called. Anyway, uh, let's add a more meaningful method which will return a string to the QML file, right? So I'll say Q string and get text or something like that right uh, or get date right for that you have to include q date or q date time right okay anyway uh, right click here refactor add definition here we'll be implementing the logic right we'll return uh, Q date time, current date time. Uh, okay, no variable conversion. Let's see what this function returns actually. Okay, it's returned Q date time. Uh, there must be another method to return a string, right? Hmm. To string. Now I should return properly. Okay, let's see. Two string format and few color. Okay, let's let's see how to get the current data time in string. Right, let's see that. Okay. Q time. There must be something with Q string, right? Two string string view. Oh. Dot two string. There is a method called dot two string. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it gets the current data time and converts it to string, right? So don't worry about this. Q data time. We'll be learning all these methods later. These are Q code methods, right? So anyway, just uh, know that we are getting the current data time and converting it to string. And now let's uh, add a text. Or a label or let's say text right remove this button and let's say font dot point size 15 uh, anchors dot center in parent and the text will be will be getting it from backend so see backend helper i hope you remember we added a 
कॉन्टेक्स प्रॉपर्टी सी बैकन हेल्पर सी बैकन हेल्पर डॉट गेट टेक्स्ट दैट वॉज आर मेथड वी मेड इट क्यू इन्वोकेबल एंड सॉरी गेट डेट या गेट डेट माई गेट नो लेटिफिकेशन वंस क्लियर दिस and we are getting the current date right we got it from the backend so this was about q uh, set context property uh, which is a way to expose methods from cpp to qml so anyway we are integrating cpp and qml right anyway thank you for watching uh, see you on the next day sorry but my